All right, this is the big one, Ohm's Law. If you don't remember anything else from an electronics class, you should remember Ohm's Law. V equals IR. Now, it can be tempting to jump straight to this point, but to understand this video, you need to understand what voltage, current, and resistance are in the units used to measure them. You also need to understand what a circuit diagram represents. So if you don't understand those yet, make sure you go back and review the previous videos in this series before watching this one. So the equation for Ohm's law is V equals IR. And if you remember your electrical quantities and units and their abbreviations, you know that that is saying that the voltage, which is abbreviated V, but also measured in volts V is equal to the current, which is measured in amps, abbreviated A, times resistance, which is measured in ohms, represented by the capital level letter omega. So when we have a single circuit with a battery and a resistor, that means that we can calculate the current flowing through this resistor if we know the battery voltage V and the resistance R. We can calculate the current I flowing through this circuit by rearranging Ohm's law, so Ohm's law is in the form V equals I R. We can rearrange that by dividing both sides of the equation by R to get I equals V over R. Now, before we do any quantitative examples with numbers, let's just look at the qualitative or the proportional relationships in this equation. So V equals IR, so voltage is proportional to both the current and the resistance. Or if we flip it around like this, current is proportional to the voltage, but inversely proportional to the resistance. So I'll ask what happens, for example, for a fixed or constant V what happens if you increase the resistance? Does the current go up and up or down? Take a look at the equations, pause the video, and see if you can figure that out. So the answer is that is going to result in a decrease in the current, which you can see in the equation that I had rearranged here. If I increase R, if I make this number bigger, I'm making the number in the denominator of that fraction larger, so that is going to make my current on this side smaller, which kind of makes sense if you think about it intuitively. Again, if you think about the voltage as the pressure or push that is pushing electrical current through the circuit, if I increase the resistance or opposition to that current flow, it's going to be harder for a constant voltage to push current through, so that's going to result in a smaller current. So next let's ask, for example, what happens for a fixed or constant resistance if I increase the voltage? Again, go ahead and pause the video here, take a look at the equations, and see if you can figure that one out for yourself. So the answer is that in this case, the current is proportional to the voltage, so if I increase the voltage, I expect the current to increase as well. And again, intuitively, hopefully if you're thinking about this using that fluid analogy, this will kind of make sense if you increase the pressure or the push, but keep the fixed resistance constant, then increasing or pushing harder is gonna push more current through the circuit and I is going to go up. So given all of those relationships, this is the first time we're really gonna get into actually doing numerical calculations. And I'll have some examples that you can either pause and work through yourself or just show me or watch me work through the examples. So here's our first one. Let's say we have a three volt battery and a 100 ohm resistor. What is the current through this circuit? Pause the video here and go ahead and calculate the current yourself. And you may have noticed this, but if not, then you fell for it. This is a trick question. The current is zero because this is an open circuit. Remember that in order for current to flow, we need a closed circuit. So this is one of the common mistakes I see with Ohm's law is that you learn it so early and so often, you see it in physics, you see it again in an electronics class, that students tend to over apply it incorrectly to situations where you should not use it. So and again, we'll see this later when we run into buttons and switches where sometimes you may intentionally have an open circuit, but anytime anybody sees a resistor, they wanna go ahead and apply Ohm's law to it. So 
even though you could plug in numbers here, you could say, okay, I have Ohm's law V equals IR and I'm gonna solve for I equals V over R equals three volts divided by 100 ohms and calculate a current. Ohm's law doesn't apply here because you have an open circuit. So if you did this, again, watch out for that trap of just kind of blindly applying Ohm's law every time you see a resistor, check and see if you have an open circuit. Another thing is applying it to things that aren't resistors. So we haven't talked about capacitors yet, but for example, capacitors and other things like inductors do not follow Ohm's law at all. They have different equations. So be careful and don't over apply Ohm's law. It's kind of that when you have a hammer, everything is a nail situation. And make sure you are only using it on resistors when you have a closed circuit. Okay, so that was one trick question to get us started. Now we'll go over a few actual examples. So let's work through our example from the previous slide with actual a closed circuit here. So we're gonna have a three volt battery connected to our 100 ohm resistor. And we know that now we have a closed circuit, so this equation should follow Ohm's law to allow us to solve for our current I. So if you like to, this is always a good idea. Some of your professors might even require it. You can fully write down all your known equations, all your unknown, all your knowns and unknowns. In this case, we know our voltage V is three volts. Again, be careful not to get the V for the unit volts mixed up with the V for the variable voltage here. And we also know that our resistance R is 100 ohms. And finally, our current I is our unknown. So we can rearrange our equation Ohm's law to solve for I equals V over R and plug in our knowns. We have, this is going to equal three volts divided by 100 ohms, which is going to equal 0.03 amps. Or we can write that a little more conveniently as 30 milliamps. I did not go over metric prefixes in this video series. I am assuming that's something you've learned in a previous science class or you can go look up another video tutorial about that somewhere. But in general, rather than leaving things with a decimal place and a bunch of zeros like this, you're gonna to wanna to write it in units that are a little more convenient. So there's our final answer for this problem. We have a current of I equals 30 milliamps. Now, you might not always be given the voltage and the resistance when using Ohm's law. What is more likely potentially is that you will for example, have some target current that you want through some device and need to either select a resistor or select a battery or power supply with a different voltage. So for example, let's go through another example here where we say we have a nine volt battery and we have a target current of 10 milliamps, but we don't know what that resistor value is to get that 10 milliamps. So we need to use Ohm's law to solve for that resistor value. So again, we're gonna write down everything we know. We know Ohm's law is V equals IR. And in this case, we know our voltage V is nine volts and our desired current I is 10 milliamps. Again, being careful to keep track of my units there. That's a milliamp, not an amp. And my resistance R is unknown. So again, I'm just gonna rearrange Ohm's law to solve for my unknown variable. In this case, I'm gonna divide both sides of that equation by I to get R equals V over I. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my numbers. So that equals nine volts divided by 10 milliamps or 0.01 amps. And that's gonna give me an answer of 900 ohms. Now, whether you can actually get a single 900 ohm resistor is a conversation for another video where we will talk about combining resistors in series and parallel to get different values. But in this case, simple example showing where you know your voltage, you know your current, and you need to select the resistor value. So final example here, let's say that our voltage is unknown. So we have a one kilo ohm resistor. Again, look out for your metric prefixes. One kilo ohm is 1000 ohms and we want a current of 1.5 milliamps through that resistor. So we have two different types of units here that we're going to need to keep track of. Again, we are going to write down everything we know. What we don't know, we wanna know what our voltage V is to get that desired current through a resistor of this size. We know Ohm's law is V equals IR. We don't know our voltage this time, but we know our current is 1.5 milliamps and our resistance is R equals one kilo ohm. So in this case, I don't need to rearrange anything. I already have my equation in the form voltage V equals IR. So 
I'm just going to multiply my variables here. That's 1.5. And this time I'm going to use scientific notation just to switch it up a little. So that's 1.5 times 10 to the negative 3 for milla amps times 1 times 10 to the third ohms. And that is going to give me a battery voltage of 1.5 volts. So there we go with three different examples with different unknowns showing how you can use Ohm's law to solve for different things depending on what information you are given. But all three of these circuits are very simple where we just have a single battery and a single resistor. In future videos, we're going to show how Ohm's law is still useful for covering and analyzing more complex circuits that have multiple batteries and multiple resistors. But before we do that, we're going to need to introduce some other topics like Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law and how circuit components behave when you connect them in series and parallel. So we will spend the next couple videos looking at that in addition to discussing electrical power.